Hey everybody, what I've got here is a Lionel locomotive that I sort of picked up out of the blue on the spur of the moment. This is a Central Vermont RS11 that Lionel cataloged back in 2018, and we're going to check it out right now on Eric's Trains. Alright, so we'll start things off with the story of how I came to have this locomotive. And of course, if you don't want to hear the story, you can skip ahead to the next chapter in this video. You won't hurt my feelings. So I recently took a trip up to Minnesota to visit my girlfriend's parents. And we had to fly into the Twin Cities. Now, they don't live in the Twin Cities. They live out in the middle of nowhere in western Minnesota, kind of near North Dakota but we had to fly into the Twin Cities. And so while we were in Minneapolis-St. Paul, I looked to see if there were any train stores relatively close to the airport that we could visit. Because, you know, whenever I visit someplace I've never been, I like to go to other train stores if I can. And sure enough, there was a train store within about 20 minutes of the airport that was called Scale Model Supplies in St. Paul. And so we took a drive over there and checked it out. And it's a really cool train store. It's really big. It's kind of in this basement and it's gigantic. They've got a whole bunch of stuff, a lot of older stuff, and some newer stuff as well. So it was really cool. And so I wanted to get something to remember that trip by, and so I picked up this Central Vermont RS11. And I got this one because I didn't want to spend a ton of money on something. You know, they had much cooler locomotives, but I would have had to spend, you know, $1,500, $2,000. This one was right at $500, which was a little more affordable just for something to remember the trip by. Now, of course, the big problem with this RS11 is that Lionel got the color wrong. As far as I can tell, this is not the correct green color for Central Vermont. It's supposed to be a darker green, and this is sort of a lighter mint green. And, you know, Lionel does that from time to time. They will get the color wrong every now and then. But to me, it's really not that important because, again, I got this just to remember the trip by. I wasn't really looking for the most accurate model ever. And so, for me, it's just fine. Although, you know, the purist will have an issue with it. I won't. Now, that being said, at some point down the road, I may decide to weather this locomotive and try to darken it down to get it close to that central Vermont green but again it really doesn't bother me and aside from the color problem it looks great it runs great and it sounds incredible so what I'll do is give you a brief history of the real RS 11 then I'll talk about some of the stats facts and details of this model and then we'll wrap things up by taking this thing for a spin around the layout so the Alco RS 11 is a diesel electric locomotive built by both Alco and Montreal locomotive works starting in February of 19 the RS-11 was Alco's first high horsepower road switcher and was intended to be a replacement for the very popular RS-3 road switcher. Built to compete with EMD's very popular GP9, the RS-11 was powered by a turbocharged V12 251B prime mover which generated 1800 horsepower. It accelerated faster, had a higher tractive effort rating, and typically used less fuel than the competition and on top of that, it was also extremely versatile and could be found in heavy haul freight service as well as passenger service. The RS-11 was produced in both high nose and low nose versions, and as you can see, we've got a high nose version here. Now, while the RS-11 benefited from the increased power and reliability offered with Alco's new 251B prime mover and was arguably a more advanced product than the GP9, its market acceptance was disappointing against the reputation EMD's locomotives had made for superior reliability. So while EMD delivered over 4,000 GP9s during its production run, only 431 RS-11s would be manufactured before production ended in 1964. Fortunately, the RS-11 is a locomotive you can still see today because even though the majority were scrapped, there are several that have been preserved in museums around the country. All right, so getting back to the Lionel model, like I said, this was cataloged in 2018. It was in the Lionel 2018 Volume 2 catalog. And for whatever reason, I didn't order an RS-11 out of that catalog. I can't remember why, but if I had to guess, it's probably just because I passed it up in favor of other things at the time. So I'm glad to have finally gotten one of these. And actually, this is the first RS-11 in my fleet, which is pretty cool. So let's see how long this thing is. So 
from bumper to bumper. It looks like it's about 14 and three quarters. And let's see how much it weighs. Get our digital scales here. Four pounds, 1.5 ounces, not bad. I tested the pulling power of this thing earlier and it came in right at two pounds, 10 ounces, which is right where it should be for a model like this. And then the minimum curve needed to operate this locomotive is 031, which makes this very friendly to small layouts with tight curves. The construction materials on this model are a mixture of sheet metal, brass, die cast metal, and plastic. So you've got sheet metal for the frame, die cast metal for the trucks, couplers, pilots, and fuel tanks, ABS plastic for the shell, and then brass detail parts. And then on the inside, you've got everything you'd expect for a model made in 2018. So you've got legacy command and legacy rail sounds. There's Bluetooth on board, there's two flywheel motors, and then there's a fan-driven smoke unit for the smokestack. As we go in for a couple of close-up shots, I like the way the ends of this RS-11 look. We've got the safety chain here, safety tread on the walkways. I like these little extra pieces here. I'm not sure what those are for. I'm sure somebody does. And then we've got the plow attachment with the MU hoses coming off the back and nice looking steps as well. And then further up on the front, I like the way it looks with all these boxy angles going on. We've got some sand fill caps, lots of add-on metal grab irons, lighted number boards, marker lights, and an operational headlight as well. And then sort of expanding on that, this is my favorite area of the locomotive because we've got those boxy angles I was talking about, more grab irons, we've got this cool fan here with a spinning fan blade on the inside. And then we've got this kind of brawny, boxy area here that looks really cool with this nice metal vent. And then there's the smokestack, and of course the smoke unit is down there. And to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you just pour the smoke fluid directly down the stack. And then moving down, we've got more see-through metal screens, and we've got this piece that pops off on the top. And that reveals the controls for the engine. You probably can't see them too well, but there's the master volume knob there. And then we've got the run program switch and the smoke unit on off switch. And hey, check out all these lift rings. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve lift rings right here. We've got a nice add on horn piece here, as well as add on wipers for the cab windows. And then on the inside of the cab, there are two hand painted crew figures, and you can see they're facing long hood forward and the interior of the cab is lighted. Right under the cab, you can see a legible Alco builder's plate. And then right here, we've got some more signage. Caution, no footboards. And here we are at the back side, which looks pretty much identical to the front side, except for the absence of the plow piece and the presence of the add-on brake wheel. And then here's a quick look at the underside. We've got four pickup rollers, two per truck. There are four traction tires, two here and two here. There's the speaker for the sound system. And then here is the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track, if you choose to use one. All right, now it's time to crank this thing up and have some fun with it. This is the yard office. Do you copy? Copy that, dispatcher. Over. Stand by for track orders. Over. Copy that. Ready to start this trip. Out. All right, so here's the horn, and while this locomotive is new enough to have Bluetooth, it's not new enough to have the option of five horns and five bells, so you've just got a single horn and a single bell. There's the bell. If you look at the front, you can see the headlight and the lighted number boards. If I change direction, you'll see the red marker lights come on. Anyway, let's roll it out. Tower, air is made. Are we ready to pull? Over. Copy that. You are clear through my limits. Over. speed operation.
All right, there you have it, the Lionel RS11 from 2018. Pretty cool locomotive. You know, I didn't pick one of these up the first time around, but I'm glad I finally added one to my collection. The retail price on these was right at $500. And of course, if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you can probably get a discount on that retail price. And if you look around, you can probably still find some of these in the road names that they made. You may not be able to find this particular one, but they did a whole bunch of different road names and you might be able to find one of those. Anyway, if you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And an extra big thank you goes to my upper tier Patreon supporters. You'll see their names listed at the end of this video. And finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com slash store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Jesse, what do you think of this RS11? You like it? <laughs>